I could just make out the small dot of a baby sitting high up in the pram, which had its hood folded down. There's more than one hundred pheasants under that little nipper, my father said happily. Just imagine it. You can't put a hundred pheasants into a child's perambulator, Doc Spencer said. Don't be ridiculous. You can if it's been specially made for the job, my father said. This one is built extra long and extra wide, and it's got an extra deep well underneath. Listen, you could push a cow around in there if you wanted to, let alone a hundred pheasants and a baby. Did you make it yourself, Dad? More or less, Danny. You remember when I walked you to school and then went off to buy the raisins? The day before yesterday, I said. Yes. And after that, I went straight on to the vicarage and converted their pram into this. Special extra-large poachers model. It's a beauty, really it is. Where does the baby sit? The doctor asked. On top, of course, my father said. All you need is a sheet to cover them, and the baby sits on the sheet. A bunch of pheasants makes a nice soft mattress for any child. We stood beside the pumps, waiting for Mrs. Clipstone to arrive. It was the first of October, and one of those warm, windless autumn mornings with a darkening sky and a smell of thunder in the air. What was so marvellous about my father, I thought, was the way he always surprised you. It was impossible to be with him for long without being surprised and astounded by one thing or another. Right through the village, pulled as brass, my father said. Good for her. She seems in an awful hurry, Dad. She's sort of half running. I imagine she's just a bit anxious to unload her cargo, the doctor said. My father squinted down the road at the approaching figure. She does appear to be going a bit quick, doesn't she? He said carefully. She's going very quick, I said. There was a pause. My father was beginning to stare hard at the lady in the distance. She's running, Doc Spencer cried. Look! It was true. Mrs. Clipstone had suddenly broken into a full sprint. My father stood very still, staring at her. And in the silence that followed, I fancied I could hear a baby screaming. What's up, Dad? He didn't reply. There's something wrong with that baby, Doc Spencer said. Listen. At this point, Mrs. Clipstone was about two hundred yards away from us, but closing fast. Can you hear him now, Dad? Yes, I can hear him. He's yelling his head off, Doc Spencer said. He's having a fit, my father said. Doc Spencer didn't say anything. If it isn't a fit, my father said, you can bet your life it's something like it. I doubt it's a fit, the doctor said. Whatever it is, my father said, I wish to heaven she'd stop running. It'll give the game away. A long lorry loaded with bricks came up behind the pram, and the driver slowed down and poked his head out of the window to stare. Mrs. Clipstone ignored him and flew on. She was so close now I could see her big red face with the mouth wide open, panting for breath. I noticed she was wearing white gloves on her hands, very prim and dainty, and there was a funny little white hat to match, perched right on the top of her head like a mushroom. Suddenly, out of the pram, straight up into the air, flew an enormous pheasant. My father let out a cry of horror. The fool in the lorry began roaring with laughter. The pheasant flapped around drunkenly for a few seconds, then lost height and landed on the grass by the side of the road. Crikey, Doc Spencer said, look at that. A grocer's van came up behind the lorry and began hooting to get by. Mrs. Clipstone kept on running. Then, whoosh, a second pheasant flew up out of the pram. Then a third, and a fourth. Great Scott, Doc Spencer said. I know what's happened. It's the sleeping pills they're wearing off. My father didn't say a word. Mrs. Clipstone covered the last fifty yards at a tremendous pace. She came swinging into the filling station with birds flying out of the pram in all directions. What on earth is happening? she shrieked. She seized the screaming infant in her arms and dragged him clear. With the weight of the child suddenly lifted away, a great cloud of pheasants rose up out of the gigantic pram. There must have been well over a hundred of them, and the whole sky above us was filled with huge brown birds clapping their wings. A sleeping pill doesn't last forever, Doc Spencer said, shaking his head sadly. It always wears off by the next morning. The pheasants were too dopey to fly far. In a few seconds, down they came again and settled themselves like a swarm of locusts all over the filling station. The place was covered with them. My father stayed remarkably calm, but not poor Mrs. Clipstone. They nearly picked him to pieces, she was crying, clasping the screaming baby to her bosom. Take him into the caravan, Mrs. Clipstone, my father said. All these birds are making him nervous. And Danny, push that pram into the workshop quick. 
Mrs. Clipstone disappeared into our caravan with the baby. I pushed the pram into the workshop. 